Where we have rhythms and we have rhyme, Fang. Ha! Huh. Yeah, okay, you went that was in you went to a more interesting place with that than I thought you would. <laughs> what okay. Hi, my name is Ball. I'm Yana. What did you think I was gonna go for? I don't know. Are we here to I bust well, bust some rhyme <laughs> fang? I don't know. We we are here to bust some rhyme fang. <laughs> but uh do you remember that time that you capped it to three and I clapped automatically mid-conversation? <laughs> I've conditioned you. Yeah, you have. Hi, this is episode 18? 19, actually. 19! Oh, yeah, you're right. No, 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 19. No, 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 19. They do it so much so many times. Speaking of conditioning, they do it so many times in this episode. Yeah. Actually, not that much in this episode. More in the, more in the last episode. Yeah, but they have so many roles in this episode that it kind of... This episode is, like, mostly combat. True. Oh, yeah, it is. Yay. Yeah. But, yeah, this is the second part of Trial of the Tick. And I'm trying to think... Yeah. Oh, oh, since the last time we recorded, uh, <laughs> there's a new logo. There. Oh, the Bell's Health logo. Yeah, I saw the Bell's Health logo. That. It looks very intricate. Yeah, I have mixed feelings about it. On one hand, like, I look at it, I'm like, oh, it's a really good design. Like, it just, it's pretty. Um, it is pretty. But I also think, like, man, this is going to be hard to simplify. Maybe that's, like, part of the point. <laughs> part of the point is that it is ironically complicated. It is complicated and harder for people, for unaffiliated people to put on Etsy designs. Yeah, that's true. But I often think about, like, you know how they all have, like, their, um, their Vox Machina tattoos? That look like the oh, that Google Mail artist. They look like the Gmail logo. <laughs> it does, it, like a previous Gmail logo, I think. Yeah, but like part of the thing that like why I like the VM design so much is that like you can just imagine like it doesn't seem like a very painful tattoo to get. You can almost imagine it as like a stick and poke. I mean, something they could do themselves. Yeah, I mean, like I don't suggest you do it yourself, but like I mean, it's very entry level, like. It's not so much We like, here at Critical Rollback do not no. condone do-it-yourself <laughs> tattoos. No, you're gonna, you'll get a really bad infection. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, or you'll get ink in your bloodstream, and you don't want either. Uh, but both. You will probably get both, both and neither yep. is good. Neither is good. Uh, but, yeah, I think that, like, what I really like with the Vox Machina logo, and actually kind of the, um, the Mighty Nine logo as well, is that it feels like you very much like infinitely simplifiable. Like you can just sort of do it with a couple of lines and I mean like it's that. Just about a logos. V and an M. Yeah. It reminds me a bit of like my um my parents very very fancy living community has a logo uh that's like a hawk, but it's a hawk that's like designed with like two lines and I always think like, God, that's such a cool logo. Oh. Oh that's kind of like the Simplified Dragon Rising logo from Dragon Age 2. Yeah! Which I'm totally appropriating for a project. Yeah, right. Like, it's always... I love these, like, infinite, sim- in, like, symbol, like, logos that you can just kind of, like, design with two lines. And it just is, like, you can just put it on everything. And, like, you can put it on everything. Like, you know, look at the, the Critical Role set. Yeah, I mean, the regular Critical Role logo is, uh... A friend of mine cross-stitched that on a thing and gave to me. Yeah. And it's not that I don't not think you could... Not cross-stitched, yeah. It's not that you can't do that with the Hell's Bells logo. It's that it's a little trickier. And I think that you're right that it's like, it could be intentional. They don't want it like on every merch store. Also like, like the V and the M, for example, it's just like many things could be just called that. That's true. Whereas this Bells Hells thing is so intricate that you kind of can't accidentally come up with something like this. No, which is probably good for like, you know, you know the way you could accidentally come up with another with another warlock called Opal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bad. Well, that also that just fizzled out and died, right? Oh yeah, that fizzled out and died very quickly. I think there's there was like another drama after that, but like, no, no, everybody just knew that wasn't anything. Same with like the the you remember the um, that one fan who tried to who claimed to be suing Critical Role, and they were just like. No. To be an unpaid laborer for uh, the cast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was like, no, you were not. And this also, isn't how this works. This is not how anything works. Yeah, this isn't how anything works. And like... A Discord chat is not a contract. 
A kiss is not a contract, but it's very nice. It's very, very nice. A Discord chat. Yeah, other than that, with recent critical role stuff, you are officially on the warpath. (gasps) Yeah, I am. I'm on the warpath. And people have have come at me. Not very much, but some have. And and guess what? (laughs) I've already said that I'm right. And I agree with you. I don't feel as strongly because I haven't watched the episodes yet. Um, and I might be a little more jaded, but I agree with you. Yeah. I I think that like the the, the where I'm getting like the first things off, I, I already said that I'm right. Is I think there was like a Yahoo <laughs> ask like back in the day when that was a thing where somebody started off their huge point by saying like, first things first, I'm right. Okay. And I was like, Oh, that's great. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> You just preemptively decide that you're right. I'm going to do that now. I know exactly one person who can actually do that, and I don't think that's you. <laughs> who is it? Tales and Jeffrey? The Pope. The, oh, you're the Pope. The Pope can literally be like, I'm infallible for this bit. Fuck you. I'm not infallible anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just saw a Tumblr, Tumblr post about, like, Catholicism is cancelled forever because the the cardinals forgot to roll down the Pope Mobile window and he died. <laughs> what? That was a, it was a joke, but but the imagery was very funny to me. I was just like, sorry guys, Catholicism is cancelled forever because the cardinals went grocery shopping and they forgot to roll down the Pope Mobile <laughs> window and he died. <laughs> oh I mean, the funniest Catholicism bit that might happen in pretty soon. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Is that we're going to have three popes? Three popes! You're a coyote. That's appropriate. Yeah, it is. Yeah, if the current one retires without dying, then he, both he and the former one, are both still alive, at least for a while. And then they have to, they have to pick infallible? a third one. I don't think retired popes are infallible. I mean, you first of all have to invoke it like, or something. And I don't think you... you carry this past retirement, but then again, I don't think the initial rules for any of this ever took retirement into account, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of weird, like, once you have, like, an infallible person, it's very hard to, like, be like, well, they've retired from infallibility. He, they retired from everything else, so, hmm. But I'm not that well-versed in Catholicism. I am apparently, against all evidence to the contrary, despite being Catholic, Somewhat culturally Lutheran. <laughs> I was That's actually. Why I, don't saints. I, I am very Jewish and I have no interest in, in changing that. But I do really love folk saints. Like, you know, like the, the, for, the oh, saints yeah. that are forbidden by the church. They're like, please stop worshiping them. And everyone's like, <laughs> no, we really like them though. Well, this is our guy. This is our, it's our Blorbo. Because what is a saint if not somebody's Blorbo? Yes. <laughs> this is my po- emotional support board, bro. And I, I recently learned about uh, a, f- a female folk saint called Wilgefortis, I think. Uh, in German, she's Excuse called... Excuse you? Wilgefortis. Can you spell that? It might be Wilgefortis, but it's uh, W-I-L-G-E-F-O-R-T-I-S. Huh. That's not anything. Okay, no. c- carry on. She's a, a a bearded lady saint. She's a saint who didn't want to be married. She wanted to dedicate herself exclusively to Jesus, uh, and she was in a, a like an arranged marriage. So she prayed and prayed, and then she grew a beard. Cool. Yeah, saint of I think liberation, specifically from abusive husbands. Very cool. Yeah, she's fun. She's Where's very... she from? Let's see. I don't even know if she's real. Uh, she's probably. <laughs> she sounds a little too cool to be real. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've been humming it. Mm-hmm. Dairy Girls is now over, and I enjoyed the last season very much. Yeah, you said. Did you cry? I did. Oh. No, it was good crying. I think. Yeah, it was good crying. That's nice. It's a very good show when it's heartfelt, and it's heartfelt a lot, even though the humor doesn't always sit right with me. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess that's like, that's Irish humor for you. (laughs) I guess it is. I will say, without spoilers, I hope, Mm -hmm. that uh, the show does kissing really well. 
like huh. looks so much better than it does on American shows. No fish, no fish kissing. Yeah, yeah, it looks better than the kisses on Glee. I have quit Glee, by the way. I haven't watched another Glee episode ever after finishing season two, you as really we all quit should. Glee. And also, I have been talking. Have been talking about House of the Dragon, which I, against my better judgment, enjoy quite a bit because it's less of an epic fantasy show. I mean, it is very much that, and more of a uh, keeping up with the Targaryens kind of thing. You know, it's a trashy family drama for now. <laughs> Tr- trashy family drama in all the yeah. I mean, the family drama is about who stole whose dragon, and people lose limbs over it, hmm? and sister wives. It is sister wives in the most literal definition. Coming up, yes. The first sister wife is coming up. <laughs> um, they didn't actually have enough people for, for sister wives in the previous generation. They have many sister wives in the current generation, and then they're going to all, spoiler, kill each other, and they'll have not a lot of sister wives in the, in the generations after. I guess that's also an appealing thing about this, is that like you already know exactly what's going to happen and who's going to die. I don't, actually. No. Oh. The books I know are uh, written from an unreliable narrator. Ah. And so I've been telling you about how the uh, show, which is worked on with the actual author, diverts from the the source material, which is again a, an in character written history book by a, someone with a with lots of biases and being a very unreliable narrator. Mm-hmm. So this is like presented as the absolute version. Interesting. Some events have been switched around. And some interpretations have been favored over others, like, for some reason, the most salacious interpretation of someone's actions um, are favored in places where they maybe shouldn't be, but it it doesn't make sense in context. Ah. Sure. Um, But we're not here to to talk about about Gilmore Girls, Game of Thrones, Glee, or anything We're not here to talk about any of that. I don't know why we are. Chatter. We're here to talk about episode. Well, we are here to talk about dragons. We are. We are very much here to talk about one dragon. Shall we get into the context for our warnings then? Uh, yeah, I am. Way better. Hello, hello, hello there. Thank you for joining me here in this little corner we call. The content and spoiler warning section. Uh, This is Ball coming to you from the future of 10 p.m. on uh, the 5th of December, still somehow 2022. And I'm here to start you off with the content warnings. First of all, there's a bit of vomit in this episode. There's a, a great deal of loss of agency, especially when it comes to the giants. There's some very iffy kind of sexual assault, just, you know, it's it could be a, a slightly triggering topic. Um, as usual, there's some impolite language about sex workers, and there is a, a reference to an incredibly racist song. There's also a, a little bit of talk regarding the various implications of what might happen to a body when it's being frozen. I, I really don't know where to place that one in terms of content warnings, but it's um, a thing. And in terms of spoiler warnings, I think we only really mention uh, a bit of Glee and uh, Campaign 3. I think we might say a thing or two about Campaign 2, but nothing big, no big spoilers. We do mention some pretty big spoilers for Campaign 3, so be aware of that. And that's pretty much all I can think of, so... Enjoy the rest of the episode, and I love you. Out of game tidbits. Out of game tidbits. This episode aired on August 6th, 2015. 2015. So during <sighs> our birthday week. Yeah, during our birthday week, actually, I would have turned... Uh, actually, let me think. Oh, man. 18. Yeah, I would have turned 18. I turned 22. That's weird. God, you've been a minor for all of this? <laughs> I guess, I am minor, Godin. You are. 
Uh, this actually has like a a very weird intro because like the, we we cut to Matt and he basically says like two words and they immediately go to the intro intro song. Yeah, but those two words are enough to get a look at his backsplash. Mm-hmm. Well, last time he was sitting in front of like a white, uh, an absurdly white uh, bricked background that I joked looked like it was uh, there, like a serial killer basement, ready to get splattered with blood. Mm-hmm. Now this, they have it's the same wall, but it has been distressed. Yeah, which weirdly makes it look less threatening. Yeah, no, it looks like a dungeon and like a uh, more scenic. And less like something violent is going to happen to this wall very soon. Yes, there's something more relaxing about like, yes, this is the place where violence has occurred many years ago, too. <laughs> this is the place where violence oh, is about to occur very quickly. Pretty much, pretty much, even though a lot of violence does occur very quickly here on yes, a very does. white backdrop. <laughs> I guess that was foreshadowing. Yeah, apparently so. Speaking of very white backdrops... Travis is very late flying in from Alaska. <laughs> Excuse you? <laughs> I meant white as in it's very, it's very snowy and cold in Alaska. Not that Alaska is, Alaska is usually full of white people, but it's not just white people. There's a lot of indigenous people. Oh, yeah, yeah, all of that. But that was a pretty good segue. <laughs> okay, cool. There's also, like, especially during the ad break, uh, Felicia Day has written a book and is on the stream promoting it. Which, like, good for her. Good for her. Yeah, I don't know how well also... we feel about Felicia Day these days. I don't know if she's been declared problematic or not. But, like... I don't think so. I think you would have seen that. Oh, good. But, like, yeah, I'm always down for people promoting their books. Yeah. Hopefully, we will one day do the same. Yeah, hopefully. We probably won't write songs about it, though. We I might. Mean, I might write... Unless you get a fever. <laughs> Unless I get a fever and I... I probably won't write, like, an entertainment rap about my own book, but I'll probably write it for yours. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't tempt me. <laughs> anyway, they're also plugging dungeon candles. Have you ever had one of those? No. Though I, I want to look to see if they're still available, because they do sound kind of fun. I mean, I know that there's candles available, I'm not sure whether it's a specific brand, and I've been thinking about buying one for the horrifying start I'm envisioning from the campaign I might actually run at some point. Ooh, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> Maybe. I would do that, I would do that. Uh, I also really like the fact that like once the candle is gone, there is a D20. I, I always feel bad about buying candles, because I'm like, but I'm, it's, I'm buying something finite, it'll be gone one day. So I also don't like buying bath bombs. <laughs> Be careful with bath bombs. Yeah, they'll, they'll give you infections. UTI. Yeah. You might get the UTI and not for a fun reason. You might get a yeast infection. And I don't think there's that a good too. reason to get a yeast infection. There's no, no fun way to get a yeast infection. It's all bad. Not that I know of. Uh, Why do we have songs about both of these things? Because they're both written by, by Rachel fucking Bloom. Oh, she wrote wrong about right. There's this entire extended cat metaphor in the fourth season. Yep. I was thinking about the Santana commercial in season five. Oh yeah. <laughs> she was like, I like yeast in my bagel, but not in my muffin. Jesus. <laughs> By season five, they had just stopped caring. Mm, yeah. Oh. Uh, uh. Anyways, anyway. um. We finally got permission to use the pillars of the of eternity soundtrack, which means you we can st- finally start hearing the songs that we have so much associated with Critical Role. Oh yeah, so much so that I feel really like I heard Critical Role before I played Pillars of Eternity any game, and uh, <laughs> I, I think that's part of the reason that I played the second game so much because the music would set it up, up and I would be like, "Yay, watching Critical Role episode." I mean, literally, the entire <laughs> party was voiced by Critical Role actors too. Yeah. Uh, ah, and Laura that... and Marisha's characters hooked up. I think Good times. Oh, they would have hooked up if I hadn't promised Marisha's character. Anyways. <laughs> I think it's that and um, some Witcher 3 soundtrack that I most associate with Campaign 1. Uh, was the Witcher 3 out? It was out at the time. No, I remember it being out at the time. It was, uh, it was definitely out during my relationship at the time, which ended in 2016. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. Orion comes in for a drive-by kiss because, God, we will never be free. 
We will be free. It's actually like, we are very close to free. We're going to get a lot of him for the next single episode. Ugh. Minimizing misery. Minimizing misery. And then it won't be much more with him. Like, only like six more episodes after that or something with him. And then we will be free. And then we will be free. And at least he doesn't say anything. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Anyway, uh, after that... That's it, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's, I don't think there's anything particular about the set, so... Yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah. So, where are we at? Well, we are with Team Super Happy Fun Times Made of Paper Party Hats. Which are... I think we're losing the plot on this name. <laughs> that's a joke, darling. Don't explain it. But they are cold <laughs> on the tracks of a white dragon on their quest to fulfill a semi-legally binding contract to join the Slayer's Take, which is totally not a cult. Totally not they... a cult. Totally not a scam. Mm, none of those. They made it to his mountain and are now attacked by giants. There are giants in the not sky. Oh, well. Eh. We start the episode with the realization that the audience has chosen this for the party. Which Laura didn't know. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that too. I mean, yeah, we me forgot too. about many things. I'm thinking back of the last episode. It might have happened during like the Vox Moronica stream. I no, I don't know. I mean, I think this was just like a like a um poll or something. Who knows? Might be just something there wasn't a lot of recollection of. But like, yeah, yeah, the 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 the, street, the audience shows this an adult white dragon. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any TPK is going to be on you. On their head, and not us, because we weren't watching it. And also, we wouldn't have voted nope. for a white dragon. You couldn't even vote, you were a minor. <laughs> shush! <laughs> you shush! <laughs> and we start off right with an initiative, since last episode ended with uh, Vex getting hit by a boulder. Yep, 38 points just gone and gone and away with a stone to the head. Yeah, and this episode's mostly going to be combat, so it's going to be some skimming. This yeah. first combat is, um, it goes relatively fast, faster than I remembered anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, like, uh, I mean, they set the mood in the very beginning when, uh, um, Laura playing Grog tries for diplomacy and fails miserably. <laughs> yeah. Talon's in the midst that he has sacrificed a small child for his dice. Which is a surprise to exactly no one. Absolutely. I no wonder one. If, if his um his small child the small child that he sacrificed to his dice was his own childhood. This is like childlike self. <sighs> Do child actors even have a childhood? Good question. Maybe that was the deal he made. Yeah. It was getting very metaphysical now. Yes, in a <laughs> cosmic kind of way. Buy Jeanette Curdy's book, by the way. It's really Jeanette good. McCurdy. Yeah, it's Jeanette really good, McCurdy. really fucking disturbing. And for as much as we shit on shows like Glee for having people pushing 30 as teenagers, at least they weren't actual teenagers. Good point. Except Chris Colfer, I think, was 19, but, like, looked like a toddler. <laughs> he was legal. And an adult. Technically. Legally. <laughs> so, Laura fails on the giant diplomacy by rolling a natural one. She will be doing that a lot. Yeah, poor Laura. Uh, Lyra casts Disintegrate, which causes... 80 <laughs> points of damage? 80 points of damage! 80 points and of she, damage. Like, which works out to their not favor. Like, this is a poor... Like, it's amazing when it happens. But first but first of all, that poor, poor spell slot that you could have used for something like, I don't know, a dragon? I guess, but like, I think the, like the a, point... She actually gets... I think she gets this integrate back in a, in a short rest. Eh, uh, okay. She does, She casts another Disintegrate later. Yeah, I don't know if she had two spell slots of that, but maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Whatever. I think she got um, it back, but uh, definitely poor spell slot. It took a beating. Uh, <laughs> also, this, I love how, like, Matt describes the giant, like, getting, like, body hoard destroyed, and then, like, not even being, like, hurt, just sort of looking at her like, really? Like... Like, 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 it's, like, she just did a dick move. Like, she just, like, you know... She, I mean, the dick move is that she then tries to speak giant to him. Yeah, it's just like... And messes it up. I, I, like, come on, man. Like, be normal about this. <laughs> yeah, and also it kind of uh, screws them over because this is a giant that dies later. Yeah, I mean, both the giants die, but, like, that one dies quickly. Both die, but he dies first. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he would have been more hit, more hit point meat shield if they hadn't damaged him this severely first. Scanlan tries to seduce. No. He tries to control human. What is it called? Dominate person. Dominate. He, oh, that's why. I, that's why it's seduced in my brain. He tries to dominate person. <laughs> That might be how it is used in your game. <laughs> Shush! Hi, Lily. <laughs> he tries to dominate person, which of course does not work because, as we all know, giants are not people. Which I call bullshit on. I, I also agree. They're people shaped. They're just big. You can talk to them. They have a language. They have higher. They have higher functions. They, they can have, have people sex shaped. With people. Yeah, they can make Goliaths. Yeah. Okay, I think by that metric, we would also also have to argue that dragons are people. Which I don't disagree with. Then we have to talk about the metaphysics of the spell. Is this about the physical shape, where giants are closer to people than dragons are? Or is it about the mental aspect, in which I think dragons are closer... Well, dragons are kind of... This one isn't, but some dragons are beyond people, uh, but way more like than dra- than giants are. And this whole human-centric interpretation of all of this is also a little bit uncomfortable. And I am once again struck by the legal ramifications of all of this. Though maybe, like, we're... Maybe, I, I have thought of this in, like... like maybe we're, we're, like, politicizing it unnecessarily. It's something that I've never thought in my life. Maybe it just has to do with, like, we needed to be a person shaped vaguely and underneath a certain mass. Hmm. And, like, the, the person... Like, the... It stops counting as a person for this specific spell and just needs a higher, like, a vi- like if it's past a certain mass, you need, like, a, a heavier hit, like, in, in a certain way that, like, uh, sedatives might work on a person of a certain weight, but they might stop working past a certain or underneath a certain weight and you need a different one. That is a really good approach. Yeah. It's probably not what was thought of when this spell was made up, but it's, like, the closest thing that I can think of. That sounds, that makes, actually, that makes sense. I like this. Yeah. Let's go with that. Uh... What else happens in this fight scene? Um, he sings a song that might be racist. Oh, right, I remember that one. Yeah, that one's racist. That one's definitely racist. Cool. I I wasn't sure, and I didn't Google it. So, like... No, I think it's it's based on, like, a famously very racist movie scene. Video game or something? Or, say, like, depiction of probably East Asian women? I don't know. Yeah... I think it's a movie, but I'm not quite sure anymore. Racist. Um, yeah. Zara goes for diplomacy again, using her awakened mind, and she's very sexy about it. Uh, she uses mass suggestion. Mm-hmm. Actually, oh, it's her awakened mind is when she talks to them later. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, she uses mass suggestion to suggest things. Yeah, she suggests that the giants maybe join them to fight the dragon. Yeah, which isn't quite a success, but she rolls high enough that, like, uh, it just counts as, like, a, like, we'll guide you to the dragon. As we learn yeah. later, these giants are not particularly enthused about the idea of fighting the dragon. <laughs> they are not. They have but kind like of the a entire, whole statue. Hmm. By the... Hmm. You know? Uh-huh. This is the second time that Vox Machina, um... Uses magical coercion to abuse giants as a meat shield for a climatic battle. And in parts of their own people. True. Though these giants are like more people than the Fomorian, I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, just giant rights, I guess. Giant rights. <laughs> uh, yeah, so after this, they thankfully do take a short rest, at least. Yeah, they do. And which Why Lyra does get eight bits. Yeah, no, and she's right to do so. Mm-hmm. Good leadering. Yeah. Yeah, and they just chill, <laughs> literally, with these giants. Yeah, during which Zara tries to sort of talk about them, uh like not talk to not talk about them, talk to them, and figures out that essentially they're the last survivors of their giant clan. They are the last of the giants, which is why I've been on a on a Song of Ice and Fire song deep dive all evening. Yeah. Someone got a Google chat notification while Matt describes the scene and dragged his mate of the giant village. Yeah, I, I just heard the sound and was like, oh, is Kylie texting me? What? But but Google doesn't even do that anymore. What? Yeah, just a little flashback to 2015, it's, it's like I guess. It's like a sound. It's, 
It's like when the fl- when the Flash plugin died the last uh, two episodes ago, and I was like, oh, yeah, oh. good but times, good times. And then Lyra casts Legend Lord to figure out as much as he can about the dragon. I'm glad that you pointed out that Legend Lord is a fun <laughs> spell because I was literally talking to someone, Lily, earlier today about how. <laughs> How I really, I, if I could have, like, any one spell other than, like, Revivify or Wish or whatever, it would probably be Legend Lore. I really like the idea of Legend Lore. <clears throat> what are you playing again? Oh, no, not as, like, not as a D&D character, like, as a real-life person, oh, if I could have one okay. spell. Like, I love the idea of just having Legend Lore. Like, every time I see just, like, a cool statue, or, like, an old building, or, like, a very cool God, tree... Yes. Yeah, I just want to know everything about it. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Mm-hmm. It's the two of us walking through a park, hitting, like, casting legend lore and anything we can get our hands on. I think the two of us walking through a park would actually always be extremely long because we would just talk about literally everything. Yeah, yeah, we would. Anyway, I sent you uh, pictures from the walk in the park yesterday, huh? It was very pretty. Anyway, no. uh, <laughs> what we <laughs> learned from legend lore okay. What we learned from Legend Lore about Ryan Fang is, number one, his name is Ryan Fang. We learned that last, actually, but yes. Yeah. He is a youngest child, like me. I mean, I think he's also the only child that's to survive from that litter, so hey. Yeah. Kind of is it a litter when it's eggs? A clutch, maybe? A clutch! It's a clutch. I actually <laughs> think he's have the only survivor. <laughs> I've heard uh, somebody, like, like, snake breeders talk about this, because, like, certain snakes have, like, don't lay the eggs, They're, they just sort of have eggs internally, and the eggs hatch inside them, and then they give birth to the babies. And they're like, in that case, is oh. it a clutch or a litter? I, I, uh, an abomination is what it is. What the fuck? <laughs> do they, do like, yeah. hatch snake babies just slither out of them? That's actually yep. very polite of them. Um, That's a lot polite than most births. I mean, they also eat eggs whole, so... I guess they just reabsorb them. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, Certain snakes, rattlesnakes, and um, like I think uh, garter snakes do this. They just give birth to live young, but like they do hatch out of eggs, is so the eggs are internal. Uh, which, oh, like I think they ended up on like calling them clutters. Because <laughs> they're not a clutch and they're not a litter. That is, that's very cute. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the only survivor of his, his clutter. Yeah. We never know, we never find out whether Ryan Fang is also a descendant of Borogol, right? I have to imagine he is, but like, it's just it's a vibe. I mean, right? it is a vibe, but like we know that the um that the Christmas dragon they fought was a was a child of Vorogal and the lady dragon from Campaign Two. It was not a child of Vorogal. She was um the mate of Vorogal. Yeah, exactly. The Christmas dragon was a child of Vorogal and the lady dragon from Campaign Two. Yeah, and I think they specifically said that. This young, this one, and the uh, Christmas dragon are both like adult dragons, but not—they're not old dragons. They're like they're they're twenty-five year olds. You know, they've just hit their their brains have just finished developing. This one is a hundred years old, but yeah, I meant in like the, the human development sense. But yes, they, they're they're adults. <laughs> human development. This is basic. This one is basically a teenager. Yes. Yeah, he certainly has the self-importance. His frontal cortex is not. Literally, I looked it up, his frontal cortex is literally not fully developed, like, because an adult white dragon has an intelligence of 8, which is a negative 1, and an Uh ancient, like, a fully grown white dragon has an intelligence of 10, so he becomes smarter. He does not have the intelligence yet, no. And you can feel it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one contract from the Slayer's Take has already failed on this dragon, um, which has not, you know, decreased the amount of ego. Yeah, which also gets um, gets Lyra to thinking that maybe this is a setup and maybe somebody wants to get rid of her. Mm-hmm. You it's know, the, the, thing asks, we, like, the thing we concluded hey. from Context Clues last episode because we didn't remember them specifically working it out themselves. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but uh, <laughs> we also talked about how this is the end of the episode, but... Um, how there's totally a, a bet happening about this, and there literally is a bet happening between. <laughs> literally um, is. Yeah, I mean, um, oh god, Merton and Vanessa. Vanessa. I was going for Cassandra. I was like, no, it starts with a V. Vexandra. Vanessa. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, don't speak that six of the world of child into existence. <laughs> Before they can start to freak out about this, though, Percy takes a certain fatherly approach to this and says, hey, you know, nothing's changed. Like, It's hey, still a white I... dragon. We're still going to kill it. It's still an adult. Yep. We're here because we think we can do this. Whatever. Yeah, who cares what they think? Mm-hmm. We're all... We're all queer because we're part of the Glee Club. <laughs> that is somehow less offensive than the actual quote. <laughs> what is the actual quote? You're all minorities because you're in the Glee Club. Oh, God. In an episode that was actually kind of about racial minorities, but not at all. Oh, God. That's why season one is worse. Also because we'll raps more. Mm-hmm. I was going to sing We're All In This Together from High School Musical, which I never watched. Yeah, um, then they, yeah, they walk in, like, they walk through the carnage of the former, of the former ice giant village, and, and they then they have the to... statue mm-hmm. made of refuse in the shape of a uh, Vorigal swooping, which is like, I was impressed. Like, hmm, that seems like a pretty mm-hmm. good statue. Yeah, yeah, the entire scene is actually pretty neat. And mm-hmm. the entrance to Vorogod's lair is frozen up, so uh, Grog needs to demolish something. Mm-hmm. Doesn't manage it. Percy tries to help. Doesn't manage it. It so, doesn't... Uh, okay, Lyra. I need to say this. Percy tries mm-hmm. to help in the nerdiest, dumbest way possible. He's <laughs> like, oh, I can do this. And then he <laughs> tries to calculate the, the weaknesses in the ice. And like Matt basically tells him, like, this isn't architecture, it's ice. Because <laughs> he rolls ice, really badly. Buddy. It's such a fu- he's such a nerd. I love him so much. A nerd who is allowed to fail nerdily. Yeah, there's a couple of really fun Percy scenes in this episode that I I just adore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So then, uh, Lyra comes in and just does it with a fire cantrip. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um. Yeah, fireball. I then, think. Then. Yeah, fireball causes a little bit of, yes. of damage to Percy. I think. Uh, to Percy we- and to Lyra because she's be- uh, Rock manages to dodge Percy and Lyra don't and Lyra just stands there D in the headlights not for the last time this episode nope because the the ice that she melted very quickly has now fallen into big shards and is uh, landing on them so I think they learned for the next time Oops. they have to do this <laughs> the next time they don't do this in the dragon's house yep that's a good call. Even though the the layer actions in this aren't actually that bad. Yeah, Anyways, really Laura then lawyers the shit out of getting something out of her favorite enemy thing. Which actually, you know, when what? it comes, I want to preemptively praise Laura for this episode. Yes, we'll talk about it more in the combat, but like she actually does a really good job of like policing, not placing, but like uh, you know being her own rule lawyer and also like being both the rule lawyer on the defensive and on the offensive. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. For Sometimes. now, I will just. Mm-hmm. For now, I will just say that it is nice that she gets something out of yes. the favorite enemy thing. Just something. Something. Anything at all. Anything at all. In the lair, mm-hmm. they encounter the weird phenomenon of like a giant that has been frozen and whose top has been bitten off, and now he is actually not that well preserved and rotting. Which yeah, is. Yeah, I think it's. Weird. Matt says it's because, like, giants are, by, like, these frost giants are by nature, like, resistant to ice. Okay. So when you freeze one, it causes this really weird phenomenon where, like, apparently, like, they freeze, but also are starting to f- decay because they're not that good at being frozen. I don't think if it, that actually is, like, how thermodynamics works, but I do think that it's an interesting thought. No. It's interesting. He also says earlier that when the giants got fr- got flash frozen, they uh, didn't actually die of the cold; they died of suffocation. Oh, which oh. sure is one way you would die, you would die in the ice. But actually, I'm going mm-hmm. to nerd out and quote my own Naruto fan fiction from ten years ago. If you were, actually if you were to freeze over like this, mm-hmm. what would happen to you is very similar to what would happen when you approach lava, actually, because oh. by freezing. The liquids in your body would solidify and expand, which would oh, explode right. all of your blood vessels. And they would turn into, like, sharp sharp crystals, right? Pretty much, pretty much. Whatever the case, um, unless you do it in, like, a controlled cyogenic kind of thing, 
And even then, it it's pretty, kill you. pretty shoddy. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't trust... Like, don't trust anyone who tells you that cryogenics... Uh, cryogenics? Cry- cry- uh, that uh, is it, entirely thing. safe because we actually have no evidence... Like, nobody has ever been revived from that. Yeah, has ever anyone ever been unfrozen? No. I mean, like, people have been unfrozen because, like, their chambers have stopped working. And guess what? They didn't wake up. Cool. Uh, part of it is because, like, we've only frozen people who are, like, on the brink of death. But, um... Uh-huh. Guess what? We have never tested it. So we don't actually know if we have the means of unfreezing people. Anyway. Cool. The... the it's really stinky. So, uh, Lyra passes out ginger shoes. Which is very nice. I think I agree with Lyra that, like, being the leader of a group means you should be the one who's responsible <laughs> for having the most snacks. Indeed. I mean, also, we have already established that her actual class is camp counselor, so... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Laura then gets some information on how to fight a dragon, basically. She still, like, everybody uh-huh. still thinks in Pokemon type chart with, like, Oh, Ice Dragon, we use fire! Which would be cool if it worked, but it does not it does not, sorry. It does not. They also find out that they do have that dragons have lair actions, which for some reason nobody's running away from this time. Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Finally, this like this is a very uh, to me like the the, the in universe justification is that this is a pretty young dragon and hasn't been established for that long, so his lair hasn't developed like the big scary lair actions yet. But, like, who knows how their actions even work? The only he does do one their action in the very first round of combat, then Matt forgets about it. Yeah, that's definitely the Doyleist interpretation. Um, <laughs> and also... I mean, he's also, like, a big dum-dum. Yeah, though I will say this in Vorogol's defense. Not Vorogol. Ryan Fang's defense. He mm. is... He loves traps. <laughs> he loves traps, this guy. Not very complicated traps, but he loves traps. <laughs> Yeah, the way to approach him is very trapped. That is true. Yeah, which yeah, they, like um, a, stumble a big, into a lot. Like an ice crevasse that's like covered over with a thin sheet of ice, and, it, and the whole thing is like spiked over with with ice spikes. And I was like, oh, this looks cute. I like that. Aww. He's thinking about it. He made an it. effort. He made an effort. I like to think of him just like walking around like, I'll put the ice crevasse here. I'll put two layers of ice walls on. Mmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. He thinks he's so clever. <laughs> he's like your cat pretending it's hidden. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. Like, he doesn't know he's he like has a ears. Christine's Percy with the ears poking out of the, yeah. of the laundry basket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Percy. Uh, not this Percy. Christine's Percy. It's Madison. Who was named after this Percy. Yes. Um. <clears throat> What else are we, we thinking about here? Uh, yeah, so they approach everything. They they need to decide who gets some skin. Yeah, yes. And they figure out that it's it, it Trinket who should get it, because otherwise he wouldn't participate in the battle and just chill out. <laughs> I will be... <laughs> I don't even mean to make these puns. I notice it when I say them. Anyways, he will just hang out at the, the side of the battlefield and uh, look very, very... I don't know. I do, I do think that it probably should have gone to Scanlan, but... And what is it? It's fine. Trinket pro- Trinket did actually contribute quite a bit this episode, so like, he gets, oh, he yeah. gets it. It's good for him. And, th- and then Zara is the first one to ever talk to him. Yeah. With Beast speak, and I think. Notes that his voice is sexy. Matt does have a sexy bear voice, which is a little distracting. It is. It's also weird, because he is uh, Vex's bear son. Yeah. Who also shows off his dick and balls. Yeah, which you know now, you now know what it looks like. <laughs> you could too. I guess we know what it looks like. Yeah, you uh, yeah, you shared it with me. I think in a previous episode we have wondered what, how uh, a bear's genitals actually look. Because which... we, we hadn't seen them, because they're like politely hidden away. And then by um, from a very cool video of a moose kicking the shit out of a, of a grass mowing robot, <laughs> I... Uh, Came to a trail cam, which involved a bear rubbing himself against a tree with his dick right on the height of the camera. Which is how we know that it's um, it's thinner than you'd expect. Yeah, it's actually, I mean, we haven't seen it erect, I suppose. Mm-hmm. 
But it is just a very hairy, dangly bit. Yep. In case you were interested. Yeah. I don't know. Look it up. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, tr the trinket is very nice. He says that, like, where, you know, any way that he can protect his vex. <laughs> oh, he uh, loves her. He loves her so much. Mm hmm. Only 40 more episodes when she can talk to him. 30, mm. actually. Closer to 30. 30. Inge, inge, inge. Whatever. Then there's the trap that we described earlier. The ice pit trap. Yes. Mm -hmm. Scanlan previously checked for traps. Rolled very low. Was like, definitely no traps here. And, oh, look, there's a trap here. Yep. Thanks, brother. Uh, <laughs> and then they do some theory crafting. They do. They try to make a plan. But as uh, Talison says later on, no plan is good is a good plan. Also, probably making a, a plan like right in front of the dragon's lair, like one tiny shield of ice between them, is like not a good time to start planning. They're like thinking about making like yeah, like putting the because they have this diamond that they they want to give to the dragon as like an offering, and also have it like be in the same bag as uh, Percy's the grenade, yeah, grenade quote unquote. Um, mm hmm. <laughs> like I imagine it was like a biscuit tin full of gunpowder and nails uh <laughs> <laughs> that is probably what it is yes yeah just wield the shot yeah they will soon find out that they are very much within earshot of this dragon yeah. <laughs> they're just outside his bedroom talking about this and they, they were planning on like what if we put the diamond on top of the trap and then we ignite it and it's like this is not it's not how that works yeah. They eventually come up with like a pretty good compromise where they just put the diamond in the same bag as the, the hand grenade and then just show the diamond off and then put it back in the bag. Which is not what they end up doing, but like, it's a nice thought. They kind of end up doing this. It's just like, the thing is the dragon can hear them. The, the dragon can hear them. He's an ice which they dragon. Should have discovered, which they should have discovered seconds from now because he then tells them to shut the fuck up and just come into his lair already. He was sleeping. Yes, he was. He was having an after dinner nap. You know that meme that's like teenager who just woke up. I just woke up. Literally. Mm-hmm. That's the vibe. It's just that I just woke absolutely up. Absolutely the vibe. Yeah. So you ask them to cower later and come into his lair right now and just, which is, <laughs> I feel is a little bit like, um, Matt getting to uh, say his give a little bit of input on the way this group usually plans stuff. Wait until the last minute and then try to come up with a pl like a way too convoluted plan right outside of the guy's door. No, cut them off and make them actually do the thing before everyone gets to read all the spells off. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They're just reciting what spells they can do. And... Which they were. We were already debating the merits of... Yeah, we were already debating the merits of invisibility, which are no... No, and especially never. with a dragon, no, I don't. Okay, I'm. Yeah, I, don't I have the book ready. I had the book ready. You were checking. The ancient white dragon doesn't even have true sight. I think. Like yeah. I don't even think the ancient one does because they are big dum dums. But the adult white dragon has blind sight, dark vision, and a passive perception of a twenty one. Nice. Good for them. Yeah. Let me see. Do you have true sight? Do Maybe I you have, have true sight? sight? No. <laughs> Ah, uh, here, there's the... Maybe your dragons just do not have true sight. Hey, Raishan, do you have true sight? You probably do, just not from this. Yeah, that's a good point. Anyway. Um, anyway! <laughs> Matt proceeds to have just a lot of fun being a dragon. Yeah, you can tell he is living for this. He loves the voice. He loves the physicality. He does. He just loves being a dragon so much. Oh, huh, that this I man be a dragon. I think this is why like, I love his dragon villains. I don't love his dragon. As a character, I love like the Firewoods most. But I think that like, as his like effect, I love him. I love Matt's dragons much more than like Matt's Vecna or Matt's like like wizards. I love seeing Matt have fun. Yeah, he just gets like so physical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think he had more fun with the dragons than he did with, like, Vecna. Yeah. He just gets to, like, really, really, like, put both arms on the table and, like, prowl around like a weird lizard. And he just, like, yeah. Somebody let this guy play, like, um... I with... hope he gets to voice a dragon. Yeah. I hope he gets just to mocap a dragon. 
Oh, that would be... Yeah, yeah, no, he uh, can have a mocap off with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch or something. Yeah, like The Hobbit. Yeah, like that. I yep. put him in a ping pong suit. I don't know if it'll make for good cinema, but he'll have a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I think this was literally the only part of The Hobbit that was created with, with somebody feeling actual literal joy. Uh-huh. <laughs> this, yeah, somebody in a ping... Just, they put Benedict Cumberbatch in a ping pong suit, and then they proceeded to absolutely use none of the footage captured. Whoops. Whoops. Isn't that always the way? Mm-hmm. Anyways, we then go on break, because it is kind of a cliffhanger. Yeah. I mean, we know what's going to happen, but like... Ooh, dragon. Dragon. It's our first. So it's Vox Machina's third. Yeah. <laughs> of many. So many. <laughs> so this is a short ten minute musical break. Yeah, yeah, we are um, approaching a form that the breaks will take later on too, because we start with Felicia Day singing this aforementioned song about her book tour. And how she can't wait to be inside you. In you. She can't be waiting to be in your city. She doesn't actually say that, just that's what I was, so I summarized it. Oh, okay. Can't I can't wait to be in you. Good Something like that. Good for her. Before we go to break, um, like, the book is called You're Never Weird on the Internet, and then um, Sam asks her if she considered calling it daydreaming, and then she looks at him like, you're pretty. Keep your day job. Ah, yeah. And also, uh, something I think we have for the first time here is that this break is it's not for the first time. There was another weird break with an ad for Geek and Sundry stuff. Mm-hmm. But here we have Erica, Hector, and the Snuggle Lord Yay, um, introducing us to Group Hug. Uh, Erica! I'm so glad whenever I see them. Yeah. I do hope they return to Campaign 3. Yeah! I want to Vegeta the shit out of them. <laughs> yes. But what I was going to say is that, unfortunately, I really like the the, the chemistry, which, like the, the roleplay chemistry between like uh, Felicia Day and, and uh, Sam Regal. They're really funny. Oh yeah, not just in they character. Are. Like, there's a whole bit in the in the beginning where like Felicia Day like touches Sam and then like immediately sniffs her hand and then explains, that, "No, it's not that she's <laughs> sniffing you. She just smells like like uh, peanut butter right now." And then Sam says, oh, "That's good because I smell like grape jelly." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have really interesting energy. I don't really like the humor they go for no. most of the time, but they do have chemistry. They do have chemistry. Their chemistry is fun. They just need better material. They have, like, very, like, <laughs> vaudeville comedy duo energy. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like they'd be much funnier if they were just, like, given, like, a bunch of, like, like uh, fart bags and, uh, like, cream pies. And were just told to, like, do some slapstick. <laughs> they'd be really funny. <laughs> oh, God. They just eat some pogo sticks and bubble gum and they'll have, like, a great time. Apparently, uh, Lyra tastes like bubble gum. Apparently. A thing that exists in Alexandria. <laughs> Apparently, I mean, like, uh, gum is a very old thing, like gum, gum arabica. So, oh, really? Gum Alexandria, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, gum is an. Ing- I mean, like chewing gum as we know it is very modern, but like the idea of like having like the, a kind of a gum gum as ingredient is very old. Okay. So yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, other things in this break is two runs of the opening and then the character intros. Um, they get all the way to Tiberius, but then Matt interrupts Tiberius in the middle of his intro, which feels like poetic justice. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It does. Mm-hmm. And after hey, the break, Travis has finally made it here. Hmm? Yeah. Hi, Travis. Hi, Travis. I'm so glad your wife doesn't have to keep piloting you. It's very stressful for her. <laughs> yeah, it is. Though her voice is adorable. It's very cute, especially when she tries to do like, uh, like when Matt will do like a very serious bit of of improvised giant, and she returns by making fart noises with her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she sounds like a cartoon character. Yeah, she does. Because I mean, she frequently is. Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't think about what I said until I said it. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> yeah, okay, here's where Talison says no plan is a good plan. Mm-hmm. And also, oh god, the notes say pl- pretty blue matte. It's not matte that's blue, the map is blue. Yeah, but the map is, the map is made by matte, and the map is, the map made by matte is blue and pretty. And matte is pretty, so. Makes sense of matte that sentence. Matte is also pretty, but not blue. Yeah, sure, whatever. Mm-hmm. 
And also, I find it really cute that Ryan Fang is like a little perch in the middle of his that's room. That's his, um, that's a thinking chair. He has to go perch and think about his life. It's like, it's like the window box that Percy and Irvin have to just stare outside and growl at birds. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny to think about how dragons are like these, these hyper intelligent, like, monsters that are super powerful and magical, but like, they're all, they are ultimately like, basically giant lizard birds. So they probably do just need, like, enrichment. This guy isn't hyper-intelligent. He has an intelligence of eight. He's not very intelligent, but, like... He's he's barely smarter than Grok. It is very fun to think about, like, Rice Sean at the end of the day just, like, picking up, like, a cup and, like, putting it over a head and, and like, making noises and taking it off and putting it on and making noises just like how parrots do. <laughs> oh, Rice Sean only had an intelligence of 20. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're big and very intelligent and all, but at the end of the day, they are just big predator bird monsters so like they probably do just sit around and be like i don't know i guess i'll sing a song or something like they, they just need enrichment <laughs> they probably do just have a perch and some toys oh i too sing songs for enrichment yeah. i know we all know that i sing way too often on this on this podcast so do i it's fine it's part of appeal <laughs> But yeah, Ryan Fang has we a perch. We ever meet we're going to be so obnoxious for everyone around us because we'll just be singing on public transport. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Ryan Fang has a perch and he probably has like a mirror in front of the perch where he like stands in front of it and like tells himself that he's a pretty bird. Um <laughs> uh, He is also like not impressed at all by the whole um, treasure charade. I mean, partially because you're at the plan. He has. He has heard the entire plan. Uh, though, like, yeah. what a glorious moon you are amongst amidst the stars that are your treasure. God damn it. That is, Mary Elizabeth McFucking That line slapped so hard. So hard. Especially because, like, like, she, you can tell she really, really thought about the value system of her character and kind of expressions she would use, the way we world build. Yeah, and it really makes sense because, like, specifically Ryan Fang's layer is, you know, ice walls that are studded with gold coins. True, yeah, it was also situational. But she also just probably came up with these things while sitting in her cage. Yeah, she did. <laughs> Sitting in her cage looking at the moon. We're th- and we do mean literal cage. It's not just her say- sitting in her apartment. Yeah, yeah, no. Coming out of my cage and I'll be feeling involved. just... Fine, gotta, gotta be down because I want it all. It started out with a hex. How did it end up like this? It was only a hex. It was only a hex. Oh, let's stop this here. Yeah, damn it. All right. <laughs> Uh, streams buffering, hold. Everyone plays statues. <laughs> Everyone freezes a bit, but you could be practicing for the fight to come. Yeah. I also want to say that um, when stealthing inside the room to have a better vantage point, Laura, as well, Vex Laura, uh, finally rolls a natural 20, and then she's like, all I needed was fried chicken, which is one hell of a mood. Yeah, mood. God, I want chicken. Mood. Uh, anyway... <laughs> I had chicken yesterday. Lots of it. See, check if you can roll natural 20s now. <laughs> and, um, I tried rolling damage with Travis in this episode, and I didn't roll very very well. Aww. Is it because of the thing that, like, yeah. the, you'll have a higher chance of rolling high if you roll, like, a bunch of smaller dice rather than a few bigger dice? I did roll, like, his the D8, D6 thing he does with the, with the new ha- with the, um, firebrand hammer he uses, so... Those were the smaller dices, the smaller dices with the... Yeah. The smaller dice, god. Matt plays creepy anime, vil- anime villain choral music, which really gets you in the mood, but is also maybe a little too epic for this dum-dum. Yeah, he's such a dum-dum. We are kind of bullying this dragon, aren't we? He deserves it. He's got an ego problem. True. Scanlan tries the bit, uh, tries to get the dragon to pull out the other diamond, which is the grenade, I suppose. Yep. But the dragon is like... Do you know the acoustics of this place? So, the acoustics here are fucking amazing, dude. This is like a. I live in like a. Uh-huh. I live in like a, a music hall. It's you. This is like an opera play, like an opera house. It's not. Doesn't work like this. He probably does sing songs <laughs> to entertain himself. <laughs> I mean, the acoustics are phenomenal. Uh huh. If you're not singing songs, you're basically Anyways. you know you're 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 losing half the appeal. Scandal introduces himself as Bert Reynolds, which. Has everyone just dying from laughter? You can even hear the crew laughing off screen yeah. and the other people who are there for some reason. I think this is probably the first time he's done the Burt Reynolds on stream. 
But he's definitely done it before. Is it? I don't know. He might have mentioned it before. Yeah, I think that it happened before. Not like this, but it, I think it happened before. Maybe in the uh, the Underdark? Yeah. Have we already forgotten about this? Yeah, the Underdark just slips from our minds like so much seawater. Aww. That's a pretty way to say that. Thank you. Me and Mary Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then... Then um, Rhyme Fang gives them like a speech about how he is not the hunter, he is the hunter. He rules over this Thorain Tundra. He is a stalker. He's a stalker of this Timberland. And we once again have never gotten a name for what this Timberland is called. It's just the Timberland. Vesper Timberland, actually. Is it? I thought the Vesper Timberland is outside of Whitestone. Do you really think? The Dorolos would name their daughter after the woods outside their house? They might. True. I mean, there's very little that current Dorolos won't name their children after. Apparently, You're correct about that. Wolf. But. At least it's not Raven. No, they did worse. Like, I consider Wolf to be a bad name, but not the worst name. Mm hmm. Vaxel The worst though. name is. Yeah. Yeah. That's the worst name. That is absolutely the worst name. Mm hmm. They cannot hide behind Will Handle then, because nobody expected much out of those parents anyway. Yeah, it was a surprise that they had a one child, much as much less two. So it's two spite children before they finally broke it off. No. But that's still far from here. Mm -hmm. For now, Zara would like to use fuck me, but she hasn't prepared that spell. <laughs> she also has like the funniest delivery for this because she she says like, I use fuck me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> It's a yeah. high-level spell. She just has this, like, yeah, uh, she just has this, like, innate sense of gravity that she can't really shake off. Yeah, and then she drops it so quickly that it's so fun. It's very funny. She talks the giants into uh, fighting for their freedom here. Yes, she does. She's very useful. Without casting when, anything. I mean, it's very useful just because of, like, damage minimization, which is actually, like, a really good, like... It's, a, it's very much noticeable that, like, the dragon does a lot of damage, but not nearly as much as he could have. Oh yeah, like a lot yeah, we we'll get there. The the best strategy they've had, like as much as they they had like shit planning, they're sort of on the ground, boots on the ground, like strategizing isn't too bad, and it seems to to be the most effective thing is just like avoiding as much damage as possible. I mean, the two basic things: avoid being in reach and avoid being within the cone of his breath weapon. Yeah, and spread. Congratulations, out. you know now to fight a dragon. They're actually really good also about spreading out. Like they constantly say like spread yeah. out, spread out, spread out, which like is very good because it allows uh, more like. I mean, most of them are spellcaster. Like three of them are spellcasters, and two of them are like ranged fighters. Yeah, and they only so... have like a couple instances of, of friendly fire, but it also minimizes the amount of like cone damage they can all take at once. Yeah. So yeah, it's really good. They they take cover, they stay out of range, and they spread out, which is like. Yeah, pretty solid. Pretty solid. Still, um, Zara actually does one third of the entirety of the damage that the dragon takes. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really fun. I think probably that's because yeah. of the witch bolt. And exactly, that's because of the witch bolt because she only can cast it at like a high level spell slot because warlock, and then that just keeps going with d12s. Yeah. So she does a high amount of damage every single turn and doesn't have to roll for it. Yeah, and because of where she positions herself and like the fact that she's not drawing attention, she doesn't have to take that much like um, what is it called? Uh. The saves. I think she does take some damage from the saving throws uh, from the breath weapon. Mm -hmm. um, concentration checks. But we don't we don't know how concentration checks work yet. That's true. So she probably should have lost concentration for taking fifty four points of damage there. Probably. Pretty sure you kind of got it. Probably. But I mean, who are we to be sticklers for the rules unless we're using it to own someone? But yeah, do you want to just do like? A highlight overview of this battle? Look, I put like spaces between combat rounds. Good job, thank you. Lyra has a negative one initiative. Percy can still do headshots. Yes, he can, and it's very good. It doesn't really do much because whenever he does it, the dragon just won't take an attack roll. Yeah. This dragon also gets his breath weapon back like three times. Yeah, he gets heroes really well on that. Uh, but it does manage to like, I guess like knock down some, some resistances. I don't think he actually no, I don't think he does that. No. No, it doesn't, because the dragon doesn't roll against that. Yeah, that's true. What's really cute is how whenever Zara rolls the... Well, like, um, um, Mary rolls the d damage for Zara's Witch Bolt is when that actually Travis jumps in to help her with the math. Oh, that's nice. 
Good job, Travis. Yeah. In the first round, Scanlan tries to use Eye Bite, but the but and that is when they learn that that the dragon has legendary resistances, mm -hmm. which they uh, promptly forget about. The other two um, legendary resistances are drawn out by Lyra using Hold Creature, mm -hmm. which she shakes off both times. Yeah, but he manages to get down the rest. I, I honestly do think there's a problem with the fact that how, like, legendary resistances and leg legendary actions get, like, kind of mushed together because they, we need, like, a, a more clear differentiation between the names. Yeah, and this is, like, I mean, this is, like, the first time everyone here encounters this. You can also tell, like, Matt gets way meaner with the dragon combat later on. Uh -huh. In this, um, like, in the first round, the dragon just uses uh, his... Um, what is it called? Frightful Presence? Frightful Presence, right. No, he doesn't even use his breath weapons in the first round. That's true. The dragon roars, it scares everyone, it flies down, it does nothing, even though you can technically do the roar and three melee attacks yeah. in a round. He doesn't do that. He doesn't. We get exactly one lair action, which is when Grog gets almost hit by icicles, um, and none, yeah. of, none, none other of those. And then Lyra does her disintegrate. Uh, yeah, she does this in the first round. Um, but uh, the uh, dragon actually passes the fail, mm -hmm. um, passes the um, saving throw, that one, yes. So um, 80 damage turns to 40 damage, which is still really good. It's still a lot. Mm -hmm. um, after the first legendary resistance triggers, uh, Travis is like, Percy, use your badass motherfucker feet to make it work. <laughs> it has a cooldown, sorry Travis. Yeah, he can't invoke it on, on purpose. I mean, the next time uh, Percy rolls at this advantage and he rolls a 20 that he can't use, as, as, as Felicia points out helpfully. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. But when he tries to shake off, and I think he... Does he manage this round? Doesn't really matter. Um, but when he tries to roll against the against being frightened, everybody starts uh, singing Shake It Off. Yeah. Which is uh, a great example of how the whole Bart thing actually works. Yep, it just gets stuck in your damn head. It's just your friend singing, friend singing a silly song to hype you up. Yep. I do also want to like say that there's some actually pretty good like support barding in this episode, which is like, yeah, I love a good support bard. He doesn't cast a single healing spell. He doesn't, but he does a lot of like. He actually does a lot of inspiration and tries to do some cutting words. Does he? He tries. He doesn't work. I don't remember. And not all oh. of his spells are damage spells. Some of them are hold in place spells. Some of them are like. I mean, Bigby's hand. Yep. Which is technically a damage spell, but it's like mostly uh, keeping the dragon in place so Grog can keep hitting its spell. Yeah, kind of, I suppose. So yeah. I didn't really notice his use of inspiration so much. I kind of wondered why he didn't try to cutting words the thing that the attack that took him out. Because it was a natural 20. No, it wasn't. It was, wasn't it? No, I'm pretty sure it was later on. Like he does get critically tail whipped at some point, okay. but that's what the what the um, I might have mixed. But he only up. goes down later. I wrote this all down chronologically. We can't just go through it this way. Okay. <laughs> at one point during the round two, I think Matt tells Vex she has advantage against dragons because favorite enemy because the chat has been telling him so, and Laura is like, "Nope." I've... I looked it up. I was upset about this. I do not have advantage. Yeah. Which, like, I'm biased, but if I was a DM, I would have given her, like, DM inspiration for. Just because, like, hey, good on you. Thank you for doing your homework. Yeah, and not taking, like, if you know that this isn't true, not taking the thing just because, like, it's it makes your, your you know, it helps you. But being honest and saying, like, hey, I know this would be my ben to my benefit, but it's not, it's not it, it's not true. Mm-hmm. Good job, Laura. Fair play. Good for you. Fair play. Clap, clap. She unfortunately does not shake up clap, the, clap. the fear following this, though, but... No, but Trinket does. Trinket does. God, I'm With not... a 20. When Ryan Fang finally uses his breath weapon in the second round, and Matt doesn't roll for the damage, it's just a flat 54 damage every time. The, mm -hmm. the giant that was disintegrated earlier dies. Well, he gets fr he's not down, he's frozen up in place. Yeah, but um, he's dead. This is when Bigby's... Yeah. This is when Bigby's hand comes out and also the hand grenade. Yeah, the um, hand grenade. Though... Percy never gets to shoot it, unfortunately. Eh, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, they kind of managed to use it as a trap. Yeah, they because, do. Because um, Lyra burns um, burns one resistance with her whole monster. The surviving giant does nothing. Uh, Travis tries to get Talison to shoot it, but Talison is like, well, we, you, it's gonna hit you and Scanlan. Mm -hmm. So he just goes for regular shots and also a disadvantage. And Scanlan then gets critically tail-whipped, as I put it. Yep, critically um, whipped. 
Yep. Um, which does set off the grenade, so he takes damage from that which too, again, so does Grog. <laughs> this is a, a very funny, and also made me slightly sad, to, just because I don't like it when men are angry. I don't like it when men get angry. Big men don't get angry. It scare the ball. Um, <laughs> Aww. Though it's Travis, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, Travis is good about not being that intimidating when he's angry. Because, yeah, like, Laura is the one who points out, like, hey, if the, the tail hits the, um... Like, she she tries to help by saying, like, hey, hey if he critically tailed scan on the tail comes down on the grenade. And then it's like, oh, yeah, but that means that Travis, well, not Travis, Grog and Scanlon are both within range. And Grog was planning on running away the next round, which uh, Travis is very haughty about. Oh, well. Yeah, it's fun. Anyways, this is not what makes, makes Scanlon go down. He is still up for his turn this round. That's um, true. Percy goes full mad scientist mode, cackling and everything after this explosion, which inspires him to also shake off his 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 um his scared thing. Mm-hmm. And he gets and then, like, so inspired by his own genius that he shakes yeah. off his fear. Vex doesn't, but Vex still manages to hit the dragon with an exploding arrow mm-hmm. that also hits Scanlan and Grog. <laughs> so. Vex isn't very good about friendly fire this episode. No, but Vex has like a really feels bad... bad about it. Vex hmm? has just a bad combat in yeah. general. Which sucks, because yeah. this is her favorite enemy, but she just doesn't roll very well. Most of her effects just end up hitting people. If when they do hit, it takes a really long time to shake off the fear. Yeah, and yeah, Vex is kind of screwed over here. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, person me my girls. I'm sorry, I'm a genius. Oh god, I'm so clever. <laughs> Which is He's a great quote by him. He is. Trinket attacks. Rhymefang tries to fly off, leading us to the you you can leave when Bird Reynolds tells you to leave mm-hmm. quote. Which is a silly quote, but it is a very cool scene. It is. Which then leads to uh, Rhymefang downing Scanlan with several attacks in a row. Which is also a case of Matt being generous because... He hits, I think, actually, um, this would have counted as four death yeah. saving. Yeah, because he hit him yep. directly in melee. Yes, the re- the way it usually works and will work in the future is when you are down and are hit by a melee attack, this automatically crits and you lose two death saving throws. See also yes. Keyleth down by the bone devil in hell. Yeah. Um, and I think this is, this is how Percy dies to a dragon later on too, right? Yeah, to Raishan. Yeah, yeah. Um, but here, Matt, I don't. The I think just gets you every this, time. Or doesn't know about it. Yeah, so I think he probably first, just doesn't know about it. Yeah. Yeah, the first attack, which I was like, why didn't you at least try to cutting words this? Take Scanlan down, and then two That's more true. go off, which should have killed him. Oh, but it's only. Hmm? Oh, oh, oh! I know why he didn't do cutting words because cutting words is a reaction. And he already used his reaction to cast oh, wow, Bigby's hand because right. he has the Warcaster feet. I know the right. I know, I, I know a thing. I know a thing. <laughs> right, and it hasn't been his turn yet. Mm-hmm. Good thing it hasn't been his turn yet, to be fair. Um, yeah, okay, 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 I'll take everything back. <laughs> thank you. Sorry, thank you. I'm just excited because I knew a thing. No, no, I'm, it's good. I don't, I don't mind. Keep doing that. You don't usually check me on rules, but this... Yeah, okay, I didn't even yeah, think about that. Yeah, I usually that. don't know the rules that well. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so Scanlan is down, but not out. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, also what I find interesting is that Rhyme Fang chooses not to save against the grenade damage, because he still had a, he still had a legendary resistance left, but figured that... Probably figured that this damage isn't worth it. Yeah, I think he's probably... St- I-, I assume this is also why he didn't try to save again. Like, use the legendary resistance against Bigby's hand, probably, because he was thinking, like, oh, I'm just gonna knock out Scanlan. That was a grappling thing. Oh, He didn't but- have to do a saving throw. This was, this were um, competing athletic rows. Ah, rows. okay. It's a check, not a save. But yeah, I assume that he's ho- he's using his letter... He's holding his legendary resistances in preparation for that whole monster again. Yeah, for stuff that uh, will actually fuck him over. Yeah. Yeah, then Grog turns into a nurse support mode and administers skill and a health potion. I love it when Grog goes nurse mode. I know it's it's usually like <laughs> this isn't cute. Grogs only go nurse mode when they're incredibly stressed. <laughs> I mean they only go nurse mode when their friends are down on the ground and almost dying, so yeah. 
Yeah, so like I know it's not cute. Like this is very this is actually this is not good grog husbandry. But <laughs> it's so nice when grog goes in this mode. It's very fun. I love it when he's just running around cuz he's really mobile. He gets like a lot of movement. He, is. he gets to he, he always does. has potions on him. At some first he doesn't die this combat because later on Grog manages to get to him very quickly before he has to roll another death save. Yeah, and he power feeds everyone. <laughs> it's it's fun to think about just yeah. a, a giant angry man just shoving a potion into your mouth and maybe <laughs> chipping a tooth. Yeah, and then he just slides Scanlan across the floor to the other end of the cavern. He was a natural 20 to do it. <laughs> he shot puts him. Yeah. I know he doesn't shot put him. He um he curling. He does it like uh like is it curling? Yeah, curling. Yeah. He just slides him across the ice. <laughs> yeah, and then he gets another, like, win for Travis, because when, Ma- when, Ma- when Mary does her turn and they help her with calculating the damage again, he actually bests Laura at math. He does. This is his, yeah. this is his lady favors friend. I, I, I wish they would uh, keep the, the term lady favors as opposed to yeah the other term they use. Yeah, well, whatever. The living giant does decent amount of damage to the dragon, and then Lyra uh, uses whole monster again, this time explicitly to drain the resistance, because tactical thinking. Hooray. Hooray. Next turn. Next round. Next turn. Round. Woo. Woo. Almost Percy there. Does a shooting. Almost there. Vex does he a shooting. He does hitting. a shooting. Actually, yes. Vex also does a shooting. Vex is still frightened, and Halo of Thorns hits the giant, which is... um. Not good, because the giant will not turn against them. Which I don't really, like, I don't really get it. Like, I do understand understand that the giant sees, oh, my my, my buddy died, and this isn't looking good. But does he really think Rhymefang is going to spare him? No. Does I guess really, it's I mean, just, like, a spiteful thing. It doesn't really make sense to me, either. I feel like if you're co- kind of already, you know, balls deep in this, you have a party that might spare you, and you have a dragon that absolutely won't. Yep, so... It's like an Azula thing. You know what is you know the the Azula thing like the um you know what if I throw you into the river like into the ocean like <laughs> you have the waves that have already decided to kill you and you have me who haven't made, I haven't made up my mind. <laughs> Which is stupid by the way, but hey, so stupid. She's 14. She is 14. She is Anyways. about the same like, intelligence and wisdom level as this yes! dragon. Honestly, she's smarter than this dragon, but this was a very stupid thing to do because, like, girl, the sea is going to kill all of you. Yep. Especially if you throw your captain over. Especially then. Mm-hmm. And none of your fancy firepowers are going to help you for long. Nope. Anyways, then Laura Vex finally shakes off the fear by Laura rolling a natural 20 Yay. after Mary telling her, come on, darling. Yeah. Bisexual uh. Vex. Ha. <laughs> You'll have to see it. Then mm-hmm. they all, like, Percy Vex and Lyra all get hit by 54 damage, 54 <laughs> frost damage. Yeah. And the room goes quiet, as Travis it says. It does. It does go quiet. Everyone just quietly. This is, I think, um... This episode combat really highlights how uh, necessary D and D Beyond is as a website because they're all just you can hear the silence of them all like looking at their character sheet and doing the math and like <laughs> uh oh uh oh you're not wrong mm-hmm. but no one is down yet no one's down yet but like Percy's, and then Grok is like quite low. Goes- yeah, and then Grok goes full threat management and just kills the giant to switch side, and he takes him down in one turn, which is <laughs> badass. Mm-hmm. And okay, yeah, maybe Grok has a problem with giants. That's fine. That makes sense. Grok also, yeah, Grok has family issues. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Zara does another also... fifty-three damage for like Zara's witch bolt on I a turn, for you. quite frequently, does almost like. By one point difference, does as much damage as the as the breath weapon. Yeah, that's really sick. Like, that is fucking sexy. It's so sexy. I have a wild theory for you. What if Grog's mom yeah. was a frost giant? You think he has, like, suppressed issues with frost giants because his mom left him? I mean, I guess it's just my only theory. It's like, oh, that's why she's not around. She just, like, you know, had the baby. It was like, okay, bye, guys. Back to my frost giant ways. Why would her frost giant base be so much different from the other Goliath's ways? And wouldn't it make Grog like a three-quarters giant? Yeah, you're right, you're right. That doesn't make sense. 
I mean, anything is possible. For all we know, Grog hatched from an egg somewhere. Might have been in the same clutter as this dragon did. <laughs> For all we know, Grog has been was carved out of out of like a stone that that mm-hmm. his dad fought. For all we know, Grog's dad was trans. All possible. For all we know, well, everything is possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say anyways. that Stone Dress Rounder does sound like the kind of name that uh, he might have come up with for himself. <laughs> oh god. We get there when we get there. Eventually. Yeah. In a year or two. <laughs> More like four. But hey. Mm-hmm. Um, lightning round through the rest of the, r- the round. Scanlan and Lyra do actually almost identical amounts of damage. Well, spells that do identical amount of damage when everybody hides up the fireball way more. Um, mm-hmm. And I think she rolls a little bit better than him, but technically those, like, lightning bolt and fireball do the exact same amount of damage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they both do that. Percy gets critically tail whipped, which turns his face into a mess, leading <laughs> him not, to say, I like my face. It's not the only time he'll be whipped. Ayo. <laughs> Ayo. I, watch me hail myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm not leaving you hanging. It's thank fine. you. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> you so much. No. Lyra also says, I'm sorry, I have self-esteem issues after saying they're all going to die <laughs> after Percy goes down. Mm-hmm. Which leading to Mary going, or like, Lara going, not today you don't, which is how therapy works. That's how therapy goes. <laughs> Might have uh, self-esteem issues, but not today, motherfucker. Not today. Percy fails, next round. Percy fails a death saving throw. Yes, he does. He's now at two. But, but, also uh-huh. Ryan thing is really rough, like Vex there's a number on him. Yeah, it looks for a moment like Vex is going to knock him down, which would have been a Vex... Uh, 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 shit. Yeah, a Prasalia a moment. moment. A Vexy moment. But unfortunately, she just... just comes so close that it doesn't quite do it. And then Rhymefang, who is a big dum-dum, pulls her arrow out of him, which... <sighs> children! Never do that. Do you f- ever, if you ever find yourself struck by an by an arrow or stabbed or with anything, um, anything uh, hostile entering your body, never pull out. Just if you pull out, you'll bleed out. Yes, this is this is in both sex and uh, projectiles. <laughs> pulling out never works. Pulling out never works and is not safe. Exactly. I don't care Workplace how good you are actually, at it. Yes. It does not work and it is not safe. It is not safe. Anyways, the the dragon gets a third uh, gets a third breath weapon back, which is insane luck on the on the d6 roll. Mm-hmm. Which it proceeds, Lyra goes down. proceeds to use to get yep. Lyra down, which means now we are. However, now at two people who are unconscious. Yep. However, since he hits Zara with it, we get mm-hmm. a hellish rebuke. Hellish rebuke. Here we go. Yeah, this is the only time I think Mary's like she's doing because she gets to how do you want to do this, but she does like her her like you know decorum and, and excellent delivery. But she kind of gets so excited and confused that she like starts just kind of rambling about how she wants it to like be destroyed from the bowels down, and it's still very yeah. fun. It's just kind of yeah, cute. it is. It's also kind of funny how um, she gets the how do you want to do this and then everyone goes fucking hype and yeah. she just gets like shaken between Laura and Travis and <laughs> she's just very politely confused. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in addition to this being the birthday hat party, it's also kind of like the frat boy party. <laughs> where It's just like, I would definitely prefer to DM this group over the other ones, but they also are kind of like a bunch of ADHD children where as soon as something <laughs> exciting happens, they're just shaking and yelling and pounding on the table. Yeah, I mean, who knows? If something exciting happened for the other group, they might have done that too. That's true, but nothing exciting happened. <laughs> <laughs> no one is ever this happy at the other table, yes. Nope. I also think nope. it's very nice how Vox Machina's campaign has been... I mean, I guess other campaigns as well. This cast is just very polite with their guests, and they always politely let them get the how do you want to do this <laughs> somehow. Not the next group won't. Not the next group, but it does happen more times than it doesn't. That is true. That is very weirdly true. Especially yeah. with dragons. Anyways, I included the Oath of Throwing It Back here, which is a... Think a D&D TikToker who has invented a paladin oath who, like, keeps... Keeps doing body rolls. It's kind of funny to me, <laughs> but the actual throwing it back happens with Hellish Rebuke. <laughs> oh, the throwing it back! Yes, 
I didn't I'll send that you some videos. Tells him finishes his um, drink. Yep. Everyone and stay hydrated. Everyone stay hydrated. And then we proceed with the uh, the aftercare. Yeah, sort of. And on that note, I will now pour myself another drink. Pour yourself another. Of iced tea, by the way. We do not condone, uh, I mean... Drinking on the job? Yeah, that. Which I think all of them are doing, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's um, not also, like, mm -hmm. Matt has started, like... Was like a uh, very um a little bit miffed about the internet having pointed out uh, the things he does like saying the word proper a lot. Yeah, which I always makes me sad because he's kind of stopped saying proper. When like proper is actually the thing that that um stood out to me less as opposed to like ma. Toothy ma, ma yes. Toothy ma just happens all the time and it's way more noticeable than proper. Proper is fine. Nobody nobody worries about proper. It's like saying yeah. like I say like I edit this podcast so I know that I say like constantly and it's fine nobody hears it. <laughs> it's basically a fill word like just a little sound you make. Like anyway, Scanlan brings up Lyra uh, in the shape of Aldor and she just goes yeah. all in on a yeah, big old makeup. Yeah, and I am. Um, it's like, do we have to make this a thing? Is a sexual assault? Because he doesn't do anything. She goes in, but he is deceiving her. And it is uncomfortable all around, but hey. It is uncomfortable all around, but at least they're very good friends. And they're fine with it. It's their kind of humor. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Grog gets Percy back up and does not make out Without with him. inning him. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing he doesn't is. want to, though. He wants to. Yeah, he's just very careful to point this out. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then Vex hugs Sarah and they're forever besties now. Whoa! That's what they're calling they, it. Then they harvest a dragon together, which is a very nerve-wracking because it's apparently they can, like, fail at that. And, yeah. Um, this is something where I think, first of all, it is stupid that nature is intelligence-based. When the nature classes like Ranger and Druid are mm -hmm. wisdom-based and usually have intelligence as a dumpstead. Yeah, I agree. I understand why that is. But I don't think it's right. Yeah, I understand it's like about book knowledge, but also I think you, with something like nature and also medicine, you should be allowed to go both yeah, ways. Yeah, I agree. I think with Ruth as written, you can, but it, that's not what it says in the character sheets, is it? No, and I, I think that it does make less less sense, because like, when it, nature isn't the right thing to call it. If you were to call it like biology... I mean, technically, I think this would be more like survival anyways, which both, yeah. which uh, these classes should be good at. Mm-hmm. Um, because harvesting a creature would be that. Yeah. Especially a creature that you've never harvested yeah. before. Yeah. And this is also something where, where, something where Vex, I hate these noises. Um, something where, I said it right first and then I had to say it fast. Yes. Something where Vex should have gotten advantage because of favorite enemy stuff. Because if it doesn't mean combat advantage, at least she would have, like, studied the anatomy and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I'm sorry about the English language. It's fine. It's just that my language is the other way around with the Vs and the Ws. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they spend... I think they pass all the checks to get, you know, the heart, the eyes. The eyes are the grossest part to me. The claws, <laughs> the teeth, and the scales. I think that's all of it. And the giant-ass heart. Giant-ass heart. too big to fit in the bag. And then starts freezing and self-preserving. Mm-hmm. Which, good for them. Fascinating. Uh, also, like, the teeth. Apparently, this big dum-dum had, had very bad dental hygiene. <laughs> he doesn't brush his teeth. Because the the teeth just shatter immediately. While Vox Machina has, like, 37 teeth from another white dragon in their bag, who apparently had better oral hygiene. It might also be the cold, but it's probably the bad oral hygiene. It was also a white dragon, so... Same circumstances. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I don't know, maybe those yeah. are still his baby teeth. That's weird to think about. <laughs> Probably he just doesn't brush. He feels like he doesn't brush. And this is why flossing is important, kids. Yes. Voss, uh, Voss? Vex roll Voss. Voss. New character dropped, Voss. <laughs> Voss, bitte, Voss, bitte, was habe ich falsch gemacht? Uh, there's a hole in the bucket. Uh... <laughs> This is actually an answer to the question I just asked. I'm proud of you. Yay. <laughs> so Vex rolls a natural 20 to perceive loot. She finds not a huge amount yeah. of coin. I mean, Grog doesn't find a huge amount of coin too. But they find a decent amount of coin. And oh boy, so many iconic items. I was just... 
Yeah. So happy about yeah. these. They find the hat of disguise. I didn't even know they found all of this here, but these are so iconic. So iconic. The hat of disguise. The hat of disguise they could have used in a certain show. They could have. They could have. Uh, they, the gloves of missile snaring. Yeah, the gloves of missile snaring. The boots of spider climb. No, not the boots. No, not potion those. of climbing. Those, yeah, the potion of climbing. The dragon slayer longsword. The dragon slayer longsword. And the arrow of dragon slaying. Their first arrow of dragon slaying. The first of many. Mm-hmm. One of the ones uh, that Vex doesn't have to pay for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lyra <laughs> goes and, and gradually does not identify. She doesn't have the identify spell, but she arcana checks, and eventually Matt just kind of... They just kind of hang out with the things, and then it's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's fine. The creepy contract has changed to reflect what they've succeeded at by putting it into the bag. And what items they got, cool. which is... How do you know? How do you know, creepy contract? I mean, also, honestly... I, uh, Vox Machina keeps using this bag of colding. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't because apparently it's monitored. Yeah, it's 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 like using an Alexa. Like somebody's listening. Yep, somebody's listening. Uh, additionally, they get, can't fit the heart in said bag of colding, so it's not very big. Uh, but fortunately for them, the heart yeah. is by itself so cold. He, it, he has a. Uh, it is self-preserving. Yes. Because they can't fit the heart in the bag of holding, um, they end up just sort of packing it in ice yeah. and rolling it up in their fancy robes, which unfortunate, and then rolling it downstairs. <laughs> I mean, Grok just carries it the entire way back home. Yeah, and guess what? Guess what, though? The horses survived. We don't... I mean, probably we don't hear the horses mentioned ever again. No, no, they, they, the horses survived. I remember they Matt says that they uh, that they untie the horses and they take them down. I don't. They don't mention bringing them back oh, to the okay. stables. But Matt says the horses survive. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Count it down. Good for them. The first next one so the horses who survived. Yeah. The next ones won't be so lucky. Nope. <laughs> Anyways, they make it back to Vasselheim. Nothing. Nothing exciting happens in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And they find Merton at the desk playing solitaire. <laughs> Mood. I also play a lot of solitaire, Merton. Nobody taught me how to play other cards either. I don't have fr I didn't have friends growing up. <laughs> it's just me and Merton. Aww. It's just me and Merton over here playing solitaire and being short. <laughs> <laughs> it's me and Merton oh, against I'm the world. I'm going to teach you how to play asshole. I need to stop. We're going to use the fancy. We're going to use the fancy card game that I got for the Kickstarter Kickstarting backing and play and play asshole with my friends. Yay. Uh, I need to stop relating to Merton or like uh, Vanessa's gonna kill me. I think <laughs> like somehow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, a Merton also is like very happy to see them, but also they cost him two hundred bucks. Yeah, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm fond of Merton in particular because of this, not necessarily because of the earlier episode, because he does, he's being such a nice sport about this. Yeah, uh, like he goes to hand, sh hand sh like shake Lyra's hand, and she just starts crying and hugs him, and he seems like fairly okay about this. It's not, not yeah. enjoying it, but I mean, I do think I do think that the, that the rationale behind this was that they just get them to run away. Yeah. And then they are, like, rid of Lyra, who is clearly making things awkward for someone. Uh -huh. Um, so, um, with her having actually succeeded, like... It isn't fair, though. I do think that, like, I'm glad... No. Mm -hmm. It's... No, don't enter your stupid guild if you don't want her there. Yeah, just don't do it. Just tell her to leave. Yeah. But yes... Just be honest to it's her. It's so... But like, yeah. The, the, it just makes you feel like so just... Yeah, fuck these guys. Because like... Fuck these she's guys. She's going to be obnoxious about this forever. And as is her right. As is her right. Mm -hmm. If you kill a dragon for this where others failed, you have eternal bragging rights. Forever. Yeah. Vanessa slow claps for them. Hmm? I'm, I'm also thinking about it. Because they also go through a little bit of like who got the... It's like a wizard in a, a temple of Ayun. And... Uh, Ayun? No. Yes. Was it a Temple of Ayun? I mean, they are a Temple of Ayun. This is um, the one who... Marathus. We're going to talk about the guy who contracted them later. Yes. Because I think they backtracked on that. Anyways, when they get into Vanessa's office, she kind of does a slow clap for she them. Does. And then is like, this was a test of your power. and But also, I was pulling for you. Literally, she was betting <laughs> in their favor. <laughs> Merton gives her 20 But this gold. sounds... 200. Yeah, gold. 200, actually. Mm -hmm. But this sounds very like, no, darling, no, you were not. You bet on them. To have fun with your husband, I suppose. But yeah, this is just part of their <sighs> this is part of their sex life, probably. Just from the way the contract was set up with the time limit and everything, this was not supposed to succeed. Like everything also, was. Also, 
I imagine they probably share their resources. They don't seem like a couple with separate financial accounts. So, like, <laughs> it's just going this... It wasn't his money in the first yeah, place. Yeah, it's, it's going the same. Like, this is his pocket change that she probably gave him. It's not It's not going anywhere. It's kind of a Persalia situation, I imagine. Yeah. Anyways. So, yeah, let's just talk about this. Because in this, we learn that the actual person who contracted them was alchemist Oswin Grunt God, what a- from the Arcana Pensophic... I hate that which is name. which are the uh, wizard Illuminati. Oswin yeah. Grund. God, Oswin fucking Grund. That sounds like a dirty name that you'd Does come he? up with as a prank. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Does he ever come up again? I don't think so, right? I don't think so. Um, but he's apparently a member of the Arcana Pensophical, a wizard, and a member of the Temple of Arathis. Hmm. Take a struggle. I'm thinking Ayun cultist for sure. Mm, that sounds like a front for that, yeah. yes. Which makes, which does mean the call is coming from inside the house. Yeah, I wouldn't also be surprised if he's like, what is the um the cobalt? What's his face? The cobalt soul. The cobalt soul. Like you just look at like people's resume and be like, hey, wait a minute, you're involved in this organization, this organization, both of which are technically fine, but are associated with some other less like. Everyday groups. But a wizard mm-hmm. on a, in a church? In mm. Vasselheim? Take a sorry, or it's a front. <laughs> Probably both. Mm-hmm. What, do you happen to be part of the government in Wildmount too? Yeah. yeah. My my heart says that you in Cobalt Soul. Did he go to finishing school with the, with the Lila Briar? Did he go, to, did he go to assassin school for assassins? <laughs> He graduated with honors and secret identity. And poison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways. We're having too much fun with oh, this. But also comes of this is like what also comes of this is like Lyra having the realization that the reason Aldo doesn't love her is because she's not experienced enough sexually. Which like So she's so she's going to stay in town and spread her wings in that area, followed up by Mary asking, Spread your what? <laughs> God damn it, Mary. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't. I know that this is like everyone's like worried about this, but like I don't think this is a bad idea for Lyra. No, I really like. She really should just play the field a little bit and and see that there's better dick out there. Yeah, she really should just like try things out and be like, oh wait, this kind of. Oh yeah, actually, like I don't need this guy. Like spreading yeah. her things is not a bad idea. They absolutely, be this. absolutely. But uh, <laughs> I do like that. Like Zara is like Vanessa. Please talk sense to her. <laughs> Which I mean, please teach her the contraceptive cantrips. Yes, teach her the contraceptive cantrips and make sure she does not go back to Aldor. Yes. Which I think was the point of the entire mission, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, honey. and then oh, sweetie, no. I do, no. I do wonder, do you think, like, the person who, like, just, their contract just completed, just, like, you know, Osmond Grund, Grund is, like, out there just got, like, a, a little bleep on his beeper and was like, what? Wait. Wait, I didn't order this? What? I didn't order this. Just, like, an Amazon order that he did not place. Just like, uh, what? I placed this two years ago. What? What do you mean? Is this a phishing scam? Yeah, he just got, like, a full dragon heart in his, like, on his doorstep and was like, I don't, I don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> oh well and with that the episode is over yeah yeah you asked if sam and mary kiss on the mouth they do sam comes huh. over to her and they kiss and i think i'm not i'm not sure whether they kiss on the mouth on purpose but like they do yeah well they're fine these are these are this seems to be just cool with these guys i'm like yeah yeah sure. it's fun sure mm-hmm. wouldn't we all kiss mary on the mouth if we could yeah, yeah, I would. Then Orion comes in and gives Travis back rubs. <laughs> Fine. I wouldn't take that. I would take the Mary kiss over that any day of the mm-hmm. week. Uh, Liam yeah. and Marisha also come in and then they do the, uh, then they talk about Felicia, Felicia's book tour a little more and then the donation reading out happens and the episode is over. Yay! Like your phone battery. Just like my phone battery. I still have 8%. So we can definitely survive through the ratings. Yes, our Purvon scale. Purvon scale. Yay. I'm imagining us like going through like a, a swirly loop de loop slide every single time that we do this. Like, 
Into the pro- Yay! And then we landed downstairs in the Pervon scale. Oh. Which I do imagine is like a set of, of like, um, those like, you know, the scales of justice. <clears throat> yeah. This is the, the mind palace that I would come up with if we had a big playset. Uh, anyway, the first letter in Pervon is P, which stands for pizzazz. We. I don't think there's much pizzazz in this one. I liked what I didn't mention during the episode, I suppose, is when uh, Mary got her How Do You Want to Do This, they actually, like, zoomed in and made that the only screen and you got to see her. Oh, that's nice. That That was was a really nice focus. And you also could just see Laura and Travis hyping her up. I do, and I don't want to complain about this too much, but the audio... It's not that the audio quality was bad in this episode, it was kind of the leveling was weird. So some parts were really, (laughs) really too loud and some parts were way too quiet. Look at her using the big words. Hmm? Look at her using the big words. Thank you. Like, Laura was really, really quiet some parts. I really had a hard time understanding what she said. I was really relying very much on the the captioning. I didn't notice that at all, but, well, maybe maybe I'll put on different devices. Who knows? Maybe. I was listening with headphones, and I was really having a hard time sometimes. Like, some things were too loud, and some things were a little low, low, but, like, knowing that audio is hard, audio is an arcane process that we do every day, we don't even do this live, I'm And just by mentioning it, just by mentioning it, you probably fucked the audio quality for this episode. (sighs) Definitely. So I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, take away too much, you know? Like, ultimately, I do think this episode... Also the distressed wall. Hmm? Oh, the distressed wall is nice, you're right. Yeah, so I think we give it a, like a point. Yeah, point seems nice. A point. We V U is for uncomfortableness. Uncomfortableness. So we had the um we had the impolite language about sex work again. Yeah. But it only happens very briefly and it's not as That is bad. true. Yes. Um, um they have the kissing thing. Yeah. But, like, at least, hmm, it seems, again, this seems to be, like, their kind of humor, so, mm, yeah, you could read it as, like, an attempted assault or something, but, mm, whatever. It's, it's just weird. It makes me a little uncomfortable, but it's not, like, hugely uncomfortable. I do think it, it, it like, should be counted, but it's not, not majorly. Similarly, yeah. I, I was also kind of uncomfortable with the whole, like, giant thing. Like it Yes, just, that is really uncomfortable. They kind of... They kind of did force those giants into a suicide mission. Yeah, and it just feels like a huge elephant in the room. Like, it's the thing that's not being spoken is how, like, the giants are kind of people, but they're not. Like, they have this... Yeah. This, yeah. It's weird. It doesn't feel right. It's not really being addressed, and it feels like it really should be. And in later episodes, it would be addressed. So It would be, yes. In later episodes, we would also be talking about the alignment of the people involved. We don't yeah. do that here. We don't, so like, it doesn't If Max was going right. to drop her alignment for anything, deliberately hitting the giant uh, might have been one. Yeah, so this, it, I, I, if I was going to take away points, it would be for this. Yeah. So point off? Point off, I think. Which brings us to zero. Yeah. The third letter in Pervon is R. For, wait. Yes, the third letter in Pervon <laughs> is R. <laughs> I'm never going to do this right the first time. The first letter is R for role-playing realness. All things considered, this being like a mostly combat episode, it had pretty good role-play. I mean, Matt got to role-play a dragon. Yeah, that was really fun. I mean, there wasn't a ton of it. I would have liked more, but the things that we did get were really fun, and the combat wasn't not at it, wasn't like not in character. Yeah, it wasn't outstanding. It was, it was fine, so I guess another one. Yeah, one one for Matt being a dragon and for Percy cackling. One and a half. One and a half for the cackling. <laughs> <laughs> the V is for vexiness. Vexiness. Which, like, I feel like we would have gotten more of if Laura hadn't been constantly screwed over by her dice. Yeah, and the fact that she had to, like, play as Grog for half the episode. Yeah. I don't think we can, like, do anything here or take anything away. No, I mean, like, I might give it a half point just because, like, we did get the talking to Trinket scene, which was really nice. That didn't involve... Well, do you want to count Trinket as part of Vexiness? No, but I, it is not, I, I, it, it's a nice scene for Vex, even if she didn't understand okay. it. Okay, okay, okay. 
I'm okay. willing to be de- to be downgraded for this, but I'm I'm leaning towards a point like a negative, uh, not a negative, a positive point five. Fine, yeah, that be- that brings us to a two. Mm-hmm. Now the next letter in Purvon is A for action. Oh boy, there was a lot of this in this episode. Oh yeah, actually, we can give points here because this was a really really fun and tense fight scene. It was. Um, I actually looked at a bunch of stats here. By the way, um, Vorogal took not Vorogal, Rhymefang. I have the page open, so I look. I'm looking at Vorogal, but it was actually Rhymefang. Rhymefang actually took more damage mm-hmm. than an ancient white dragon would have taken, probably because if he, oh, if wow. Matt hadn't, yeah, if Matt hadn't pumped up the uh, hit point maximum, he would have died before the Bird Reynolds scene. Oh wow. I looked at crit roll stats, which is also how I know that Azara did like a third of the damage. Yeah, no, I and I, I really like the the white dragon fight scene. I think it's tense. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It's like, tense. It's fun. People go down. People go up. The tactic is pretty on point, and it's and the ending is really really hype. Yeah, and like every single like it's not that many rounds of combat, all things considered. So it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's not like a four hour fight scene. Uh, it's not a kraken. Combat, yeah, it's not a dragon. And, like, every fight kraken. scene changes. It is a dragon. It's not a kraken, sorry. It is a dragon. <laughs> it's a dragon, not a kraken. Uh, it's every single round feels like it changes the dynamics of the combat completely. Yeah, yeah. And this is, like, an actual thread. And mm-hmm. um, mostly because this party is made of fucking paper mache. Just, oh. Yeah, if anything, oh. I didn't really need the, the giant fight that could have been resolved in other ways. It just isn't That was a because mean... Of the a signature Mad Mercer getting trying to get your spell slots, um, yeah. kind of thing. It just it just I mean like I understand why it happens, but it's like it does you know. world build. It does act to the ap- add to the a- to the atmosphere. It does lead to Mary getting a few really cool monologues. Yeah, but like if I was gonna subtract points, I would say that that fight scene didn't really it didn't it didn't you know uh, rev my engine. <laughs> but in general, I'm leaning towards like a like a two point five or a three. I was also thinking of three here, yes. Do you want to do a three or two point five because we didn't enjoy the, the giants so much? I think the three already includes the not enjoyable giants. All right, that's fair. Three points. Yeah. Really good fight scene. So we're, so we're at a five, huh? Yeah. Now the last letter is mine. Is yours? <laughs> is the N, which is for nine cents, which is a. Uh, is flat out zero because none of that was possible this episode. We need to get this done. The <laughs> guests are only booked for this week. We kill Indeed. this thing and we go home. Chop chop, motherfuckers. <laughs> so honestly, like get a zero. With. Yeah, zeros, which leads us to, to a total score of five for this episode, which feels appropriate. So, what's our opinion for this episode? We believe in giant human rights. Yeah, yeah, okay. Giants are people too. Yes. So, um, giants and people too, we believe in their rights. And now, yeah. after this opinion, we would like to thank our patrons who are supporting us monetarily on Patreon, which is where you can currently, I mean, by the time this comes out, you can access the other two parts of our, um, Legend of Max Machina special that haven't been published yet. It's like one uh-huh. big thing where I don't interrupt it every, every 90 minutes or so, just to tell you to support <laughs> us on Patreon. Yeah. So if that's something for you, go there. You can mm-hmm. also find the, um, Vex and Supplementary Materials thing we have joked about this episode too, there yeah. as a patron. You can also find the, probably hour of outtakes from this episode because we cannot stay on topic <laughs> and if you're interested in listening to us not staying on topic outtakes also there on the patreon also there also the notes we keep referring to yes which are certifiably very funny yes mm-hmm. thank you very much your patrons you already said that but like i also want to say uh thank yes. you to our thank you to you our listening audience uh, thank yes. you to Lafia for contributing her lovely, lovely art. Yes, that she keeps editing on the fly for special episodes. Yeah. At Tiru. Commission At her. At on on uh, Twitter. Um, she's linked in the... down below that you can access the on the YouTube. Do. We don't say that word. <laughs> <laughs> You can access us on the on the YouTube and also in the metadata on the po- on the podcasting apps. Thank you to Current Sun for providing the music. Thank you for Current Sun. Like, comment, and subscribe on the YouTube's. Follow on the other apps. Share us around. Remember to smash that like reach, button. Reach. Tell your family. Tell your friends. Send a smoke sig- signal. Anything. <laughs> anything. Get into fights in the comments. I had pizza today. It was weird. <laughs>
Pineapple and pizza is fine. Your move. My brains are so messed up today. <laughs> I'm still doing the call to action thing, okay? Yeah. Uh, what are, have we thanked everybody? Can we go? Are we done? I think we have thanked everybody. Thank you so much for sitting through a rambling and giving us a, giving us a pretty binding reason to talk to each other every other week. Oh, <laughs>